Hey you guys, what's up? My name's Lenny. I'm a second year dental student and I go to Tufts University. Today I'm going to be going over the pattern folding section of the PAT. The PAT is the perceptual ability test within the DAT and the DAT is the dental admissions test that you have to take in order to get into dental school. So today I'll be going over pattern folding and yeah, let's get into this video. Pattern folding is the section we will cover in this video. Like all sections, there are 15 questions and I recommend about 60 seconds per question for a total of about 15 minutes in this section. This section being one of the more time consuming sections. In this section, a flat pattern is presented, which will be folded into a 3D figure, and you will have to determine which of the four answer choices is the correct 3D figure. And all folds are made into the screen and away from you. It sounds easy enough, but to be honest, I found this section to be one of the hardest sections of the PAT. So let's go over some of the strategies. In figures with unique shapes, a great strategy is to eliminate answer choices that do not have this unique pattern in them. So for this example, the flat pattern has this unique shape with the rounded back. So you can tell that B and C do not have this shape. And then D has the wrong proportions. So looking at A, you can tell it does have this unique shape and you know it must be the correct answer. So by looking for the unique shapes, you can very easily eliminate answer choices to find the correct answer. For figures that instead have unique shading, the strategy will be instead to focus on the unique shading. So for this example, in the flat pattern, we can see there is an unshaded, shaded, unshaded, shaded pattern. Process of elimination will again be a very useful strategy here. So we can eliminate A because there are two unshaded sides next to each other. And we could also eliminate D because there are two shaded sides next to each other. And both of these would not be possible because we know from the flat figure there is the alternating shaded and unshaded pattern. So we can eliminate these two answer choices first right away. So this leaves B and C as our two possible answers. So let's now go over another quick strategy to help decide between these last two answers. Another strategy that can be very helpful is a mental tool called side pairing in which you pair up the sides. You can then locate common corners between the sides to then figure out the pattern of the faces. This is especially helpful for the dice problems, which has six squares that will fold together to form a cube. And you will definitely see some of these on the exam. Basically, how this works is by matching up the sides that will fit together when it is folded. So the sides that are already connected will obviously be touching each other in the 3D shape. But what about the open sides? Where will they be touching? So you can start by matching all the pieces that share corners to start pairing up the sides. This top square, you could roll over 90 degrees so that this corner is still in the same spot touching both of the squares. So it would look something like this. And these two patterns are exactly the same. And you could roll this square over and over again, and it would be the exact same shape and fold the same way. But you need to be careful because you can only do this around 90 degrees. You cannot do it around a 180 degree arc, like for example here in the other direction for this square. Okay, so now let's go back to the problem. We already ruled out A and D, so let's use the side pairing method to figure out between B and C. Looking at C, we can see that these two sides with the diagonal lines cannot be next to each other because they are on opposite sides of the cube and cannot wrap around to the other side. 
So C cannot be the correct answer either. So the correct answer must be B. So here is another dice problem. So let's first start by looking for a unique shade since all the shapes are the same in this problem. So for this problem, I would say the unique shape is this little shaded square here in the corner. So we can focus on this to solve the problem. So let's look at which sides this one will pair with. It could rotate here to side pair with this one or rotate here again to this side or rotate again over here. So if we look at this first cube in A, let's look at the small shaded square, and then let's look at this corner here where the shaded square is to compare it to the flat pattern. So let's identify where that corner would be in the flat pattern. Let me get rid of these arrows here to make it a little easier to look at. And I'm going to bring the figure down here to allow for better visualization. Okay, so this corner would be right about here. So if you can mentally picture it, this cube would go back right here to this side. So now we can look at this corner, and if we look back at answer choice A, we can see that this is not a match because in the answer choice, the shaded triangle is at the corner, but in the diagram I redrew with the square turned here, you can see the corner has an unshaded triangle. So we can eliminate A. We can also very quickly eliminate answer choice C because we have the same corner here, and like we saw, this corner meets with the unshaded triangle. So in this answer choice again, there is a shaded triangle that meets in this corner. So we can eliminate C as well. So now we are left with B and D. If we look at B, we can again focus on our unique shading with the small shaded square in the corner. And we can actually focus on this corner here. That would be this corner here on the diagram, down here. And in this corner, we have the shaded triangle meeting down at the bottom here. And if you look at answer choice B, the shaded triangle also does meet at the bottom here in the corner. And the top is completely shaded, which would work if you try to mentally fold the box together and it would come around to fold on top here. So it seems B must be the correct answer. And here's the explanation to that question that you can find on the PAT Crusher website. So another test strategy I have for you guys is to locate commonalities and group the answer choices together. You want to pick a certain face to keep as a frame of reference and I'll show you what I mean in the next example. So in this example, there is no unique shape or a unique shade. So let's find a commonality in the answer choices and eliminate this way. So right off the bat, I can see that three of the answer choices have the one dice face on the front. So let's use this commonality to compare the answer choices. Looking at A, you can quickly tell it is wrong by looking at the three face. In order for this to be correct, with the three on the right side, we would want it to be going in the other direction. If you look at the corner here on the flat picture, the corner does not have the face towards the corner. It is going in the other direction. So we can eliminate A. So now let's look at B. We can see that the three face is correct on top here because by looking at the flat diagram, the three is going in the same direction. If you just imagine that it just folded down a little bit. So now we need to look at the five face of the die. 
which is actually symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which way it faces. And we know it would go here because by looking at the diagram, you can mentally imagine the five face would move down to fit here. Whereas if you look at answer choice C, which has the same one face and the same three, but on the left side, it has a four face, which could not be possible to go here. This is actually where the two face would go if you mentally imagine this two face folding down. So the correct answer must be B. And here's the explanation to this problem. This section can be very tricky and relies a lot on you being able to mentally picture the foldings. So practice as much as you can to get the hang of how things will fold. Okay guys, I hope you found this video helpful and if you want more practice problems, you can check out the PAT Crusher website. I actually have a code for you guys, it's PAT 20 for 20% off your account with PAT Crusher. And make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye!